force, minimal entropy. You, you, you see how that maps? Everybody understand that? So each one of those is going to map to a folder in that skins folder. Okay? And then within that, for each of the files that you have, so here's default.ascx. Um, if you name default.ascx, it's not only not everybody knows this, if you name if you name your, your skin file default.ascx, then it, then it just makes up the default one. So you can say you can see that CF or OF layout options doesn't have a dash skin name, whereas the one that's indexed does have dash index. And that, that dash and name corresponds to the name of the of the file. You see that? Okay, so, so th this is for those that, that, that want to go and, and figure out how to modify and, and monkey with the skin so you kind of get your feet wet with it. Um, you, it, it. Once you get your portable installed, once you get your, your .new installation installed, you can navigate to that folder and you can find those folders out by the names of the skins and the skin packages. Okay? So what I have here, uh, I'm going to show you that if you want to change the doc type, okay, so right here, if we take a look at my skin, if we do a few source, we can see that you've got this doc type up here. And that doc, that, that doc type is actually controlled by a file um, that you drop directly in that folder. <coughs> okay? So if we didn't have this here, so I'm just going to rename this real quick. Okay. Then it's going to go to the default doc type for the installation, which is XHTML transitional, so it's not a very good example. Let's go, you can go to host settings. This is actually part of, uh, most of Okay, so I can't go to my host settings right now because I have HTTPS on it. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, you can actually go and change what your default doc type is on the host level. Um, and in .NET do five only, so that you, you have your default, and then you can override that on a skin by skin basis. So you can see, I've got this doc type, and the way this works is you've got name it the same thing as your skin. So you can see here we've got of skin dot doc type dot xml. Same thing up here we've got default dot doc type dot xml. And what you do is you, you just have a single node in there called skin doc type, and you drop the uh, the actual HTML you want to put up there where the doc type goes, and you just wrap it in this C data so that um, you can put anything you want in there and it's valid XHTML or valid XML. Um, this is referenced. You find you find plenty of sites on the internet to talk about setting the doc type. Um, so if you need a reference for this, don't worry. Don't, don't try and write it down. That's not going to work. Uh, so, if, if you want to, of course, this is in the book. Um, so, you can see that's how you change the doc type. So, you control the doc type on a skin by skin basis. Um, and by doing that, you're able to set what level of HTML, and HTML that you're going to write. Okay? So, the next thing I want to talk about is a little, a little trick, one of my favorite tricks. Uh, in order to write valid HTML, you should have an ID for everything. And so, on a skin level, that's not a problem, right? Because you've got, if, if we, let's just take a look at layout mode real quick. If we look, you know, we've got a content pane, we've got a write pane, and we've got some items that we've got, you know, we're going to have this once on the page. So if I want to name this header area, you know, ID header, then that's no problem. I can do that because it's going to be the only ID header on the page. But where this starts to get in the, or where it starts to get a little fuzzy and a little hard to manage is when you have a container, right? <coughs> Because if you think about containers, um, and for those who are not familiar with that, they're just kidding, um, the template for a page is a skin, and the template for each uh, content block or module is a container. So basically, I've got a skin that lays out this header area, puts the menu where I want it, and it puts the, uh, the logging control here, and it's going to have a content region here called the pane, and a content region here called the pane. Um, and then for each module, I can set the container. And so the, this is the container, and the container uh, is what wraps around this, right? So whatever wraps around, pardon me, whatever wraps around your module content is the container. So in this specific instance, what I want to point out is that if you want to have an ID for, for each for each item on your page, um, if you have 
a container, you're going to have that container on the page more than once. So you can't have duplicate IDs, right? So what I did here, and I, of course, cover this in the book, uh, there's a little trick where we take a look in the containers folder. We take a look at this open source. You can see that I put this little script right here, which writes out the module ID to the page. And so that actually writes it out as part of the page, and that allows me to have a unique ID for each of these. So when I do a, when I go ahead and use Firebug to look at my HTML, let's grab inspect, let's grab this, and you can see that the ID is unique here. We've got ID DNS368 main. And so if we take a look back here, just dropping that little bit of uh, server-side script or server-side code onto your onto your HTML, that'll get rendered as the actual module ID. So that's just a little trick so that you can have unique IDs. Uh, throughout your skin or throughout containers to be put on your and on your installation. Okay. Um, let's see the, we're good. Um, do, do any of you guys have any questions about or questions, comments, time remarks on XHTML, writing XHTML, kind of how you're going to get into it in, in this case, um, or, or how that works in .NET? Around what type of variable is that? Such good input? Um, that's actually just pulling from the base class that, that uh, the skins use. So um, it, it's, it, it's something that, that's exposed to skins. Um, if you take a look, uh, and this is a developer question, a developer point. Um, if you look up here, you can see what it inherits. So it's inheriting.new.ui.containers.container. Um, th th that exposes that module configuration in there. And there are a couple of other variables I don't remember off the top of my head, but play around with it. Um, you, you, you can get some, you know, you, if you want to drop something into your page or be able to control some things like that, you're able to do that using that and put it right in your skin. So the challenges we had was static versus you know, uh, relative paths mm. in the control. Mm, I got you. Yeah, that, actually, I showed you a good trick for that. So um, if you do, OK, so Jesse just brought up a good, uh, Jim, sorry, pardon me. Jim just brought up a good point. Um, let's say that you have uh, a path you need to put in here. First of all, you shouldn't be putting a, an image directly in your HTML for your skins. You should be controlling that CSS disclaimer. Um, if you need, for some other reason besides that, to get the path of this module, you can just put in, it's called template source directory. And another disclaimer, I haven't tested this to make sure that's exactly correct before this demo. Yeah. And so that actually gives you the path of the container. This also works in module development too. So it's, that, that's a really handy trick in module development if you do need to put an image like for a button or something like that. That way you're not hard coding in the path to it. You're not saying desktop modules, this, 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 this actually part of that. So um, And that's also in the book? No, that, that's that, on that your, one's only in my head. That's on your next blog post? No, I'm keeping this one for my client. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so there, there's template source directory. If you guys want to write that down, um, I, I'll, I will blog on that at some point. So that's a that's a good topic. Okay, now moving along. Anybody have any other questions? Okay. Okay. So CSS best practices. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit into CSS based page layout. Um, who here has done a, a CSS based layout? Not a not a new, just done one period. Okay, cool. All right. Who here wants to? <laughs> the hands that went up just didn't go back up. <laughs> Good point. Um, it, it, which, which actually leads into one of the things that's really cool about on a new five, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but so, why do CSS? Okay, so the, the, this this leads into the, this kind of plays out the same conversation, the same topic we were talking about earlier, right? So, when we write valid, lean HTML, then that has that secondary benefit of having more, right, I was, I was about to say more better. Uh, you're going to have better optimized content for indexing with search engines, right? So if SEO is a concern, if you if you make money from getting traffic on your website, then you know search engine optimization should be a concern. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by writing lean code. You can do that through writing valid XHTML and using CSS based layouts. It also has the uh, the added benefit that you know you're, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain once you get it set up. Uh, we, we have a client that 